Welcome to Face to Face. This is a show about change and what's next. It's a show that asks questions and peels back the layers of our average everyday experience and goes beyond scratching the surface. We interview people doing incredible things who are making a difference around the globe. Join me as we listen in and get one step closer to understanding that big ideas shared create collaboration. Collaboration can inspire community and communities create social change. I'm David Peck and this is Face to Face. Today's interview is with a uh, corporate guy uh, who, who, by the name of Stephen Mallory, he's a fairly high-level uh, CEO of a, a major corporation here in Toronto. He's a, a board, uh, on the board of directors for Via Rail. Connected, clearly, uh, pretty involved in the in the corporate sector, but he's been. He's been challenged uh, by uh, w water issues from around the world. He saw a presentation recently, and he's going to talk about that. He's going to talk about about mentorship and volunteerism. We we get into some pretty interesting things. He talks about, and this is was really fun for me. He talks about a ten dollar bill and and getting a picture with the Via Rail board. And I'm going to let you hear how he unpacks this story and why it was, you know, one of those pebbles for him that that dropped into the pond that started to create that that splash and ripple for him. Him. And, and he wants to talk a lot about, about um, well, you know, I think I wanted to talk about a lot about the metaphors in this interview. And I think you're going to find some of that really interesting, the whole water well thing, digging deep. Oh, and I forgot, he's also a rock musician and loves Led Zeppelin. And you're going to hear more about that as well, the Cherry Trees Band and what they're all about and what they're trying to do through music and through water and through community. So join in and uh, check it out. Don't forget uh, get to uh, uh, find most of my podcasts on davidpecklive.com. You can also see them on, uh, hear them, hear them, not see them, hear them on rabble.ca. And don't forget to check out my book, Real Change is Incremental. You can pick that up on amazon.ca. Uh, well, welcome to Face to Face, and it is uh, probably one of the earliest morning interviews I've ever done, so I just want everyone to know about the level of passion and commitment I'm bringing to the table here today. It's uh, a, 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 a gray day here in uh, Toronto, and we are joined by a special guest, uh, Stephen Mallory, who is the Director of Global Insurance Brokers Limited. He is a business guy through and through, and um, Steve, thanks for joining us today. It's a pleasure, David. Thank you. So we're going to talk about, uh, well, maybe we're going to talk a little bit about business and what you do in the real world and so on. You're also the director, uh, the board of, on the board of directors of Via Rail Canada, so you're, you're not fooling around. Um, and, uh, but you've got a couple of other really uh, pretty interesting um, um, initiatives, or one in particular that you're involved in. I'd love to talk about that and about the, 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 the connections between the two. Tell me about the cherry trees band uh yeah the, tell me about the cherry trees band i was going to say tell me about the website and we'll talk more about that but tell me about the band and and and, and why are, and are and are you a musician um i i am a musician i've played guitar uh, for years in various bands and so on and uh you know, I guess you could say I'm one of these white collar guys that has uh kept up uh, his uh, his music and uh so the Cherry Trees Band is a uh, a group of uh, people that got together to uh, really jump behind this whole Water for Life initiative, and uh, it comprises uh, a whole number of musicians, uh, all of whom uh, I've I've known uh, in the Toronto music industry, some very talented people, and so each song has uh, has a contribution from one or several uh, um, you know uh, musicians uh, who uh, are. Uh, who appear in to uh, to contribute to the project? Um, the title of the CD is a fairly lofty title, it seems to me. Yeah, change the world. So, um, <laughs> so you know, you're going, I, you're, you guys are going big. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm. Uh, I guess there's a little depth to it. Uh, yeah. It's a double entendre. First yes. of all, it's, yeah. uh, hopefully we do make a little bit of a change with our uh, Water for Life initiative, but uh, the. Uh, the the origin of the name came from uh, Mahatma Gandhi, who uh, who um, famously quoted uh, that uh, we should all be the change that we'd like to see in the world. So that's something that uh, that I uh, 
you know, hold near and dear to, to my heart. So I, I picked up your, the, uh, one of the things I love about, about uh, my passion, which one of my passions, I've got many, but one of them is, is this notion of little things, of incrementalism, of, you know, uh, in, develop, in the development sector, we often talk about the splash and ripple effect and how is, you know, one outcome connected to another, you know, an immediate outcome connected to an intermediate outcome that's connected to sort of an impact statement. I'm sure uh, similar things are used in the business world all the time. What, what was that? Can you, can, do you have a few of those in your life? Those, those relationships that you met, those handshakes, uh, well, you know, in other words, I guess, Steve, what was it that, that pulled you into this? I mean, uh, a, a variety of things I would imagine, but, but what was the, you know, tipping point, whatever, whatever you want to, however you want to put it. Um, yeah, well, I mean, uh, we all have mentors, uh, fellow who's, uh, we have, uh, our company, uh, is called Directors Global Insurance, and we have an advisory board, and, uh, the chair of our advisory board is a very close friend of mine, and, you know, a very, very successful guy, and it just, uh, you know, really astounds me that, uh, that people, uh, of that, uh, importance, uh, can take a time out of their week to meet with street kids and, uh, mm. and volunteer, uh, you know, uh, to uh, to help uh, people in need, and so it's that that kind of thing that I think uh, you know inspires me. Um, I I did see a presentation um, about uh, this Water for Life initiative that uh, was was really moving, and uh, you know the gist of it is that uh, we in in Canada are in North America are very fortunate people. We have uh, we have access to uh, to unlimited virtually unlimited water uh maybe you could argue that that isn't the case in California but in 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 many parts of North America we have access to uh to unlimited water and quite frankly we have access to a lot of things uh, where there's a lot of abundance um you know money is is one um mm-hmm. and uh um you and I were talking uh offline about uh about what 10 dollars buys and i think at the time when i saw this presentation about water for life and uh you know kind of realizing how fortunate we are i was also fortunate to be in a picture uh that uh was presented to the board of directors of uh, via rail um which included a 10 dollar bill and uh, via had uh, just recently had uh, a picture of one of its trains going through the rockies mm. on uh, on a 10 dollar bill and it was uh, um, it w- the the board was it was uh, had a picture taken in front of the train and we were all given a, a picture with this new ten dollar bill and it uh it kind of was symbolic in in my mind that uh relating back to this presentation i saw that ten dollars uh doesn't really mean all that much to we in north america but through this uh initiative uh ten dollars or actually the correct amount is eight dollars and fifty cents mm. buys water for one person for twenty five years and I remember kind of having a little bit of an epiphany looking at, at that $10 bill and saying, wow, uh, you know, you could actually provide water for one person for, ten, for 25 years with that $10 bill. One of the things that amazes me about this kind of work development, I do a lot of work in Cambodia, as my listeners know. I've been, you know, been do, working in this field for years. What, without, without clean water, the, the implications are astounding because you are now talking about water-related disease, and that is, you know, epic in its own way. We're talking about, um, we're we're talking about a lack of capacity to do other things because the mother is now attending to children who are basically dying of dysentery, and and so on and so on. And so, you know, when you say eight dollars and fifty cents provides water, I guess my point is it provides a heck of a lot more than just the water. Yeah, well, let me let me tell you a little bit about uh, how this uh, whole uh, Water for Life Gain Canada system works. Uh, I mean, taking a step back, there there are their estimates. Gain estimates that there are 884 million people in the world that uh, don't have access to clean water. And I'm not talking about Californians, but I'm talking right. about people that uh, that are actually. Um, sub- subjected to some really terrible diseases, and 3.5 million people die a year um, from these kinds of de- uh, diseases, which uh, which include uh, diarrhea and typhoid and cholera and a whole bunch of other uh, horrible things. So, what the uh, what uh, Gain does is go into these villages and uh, provide a deep-capped water well. 
again, it, uh, it, uh, one well feeds about 1,000 people for 25 years. Just think about that. One well mm. feeds 1,000 people for 25 years, at, uh, and they can be drilled at a cost of $8,500. Right. So uh, for, again, a pretty paltry amount, imagine how you can change the world, uh, or at least change their world, uh, change the, the world of, 20, of, of 1,000 people uh, by providing this kind of um, water. And the benefits are, that um, you know, women uh, get freed up, and unfortunately, in uh, the developing world, uh, often the, the women are relegated to to go out and uh, and and gather the water. Um, but uh, but what uh, it provides safety because the people are actually drawn into the village instead of having to go out into the village right. into, in, out into the uh, dangerous environment. And, and what happens is, uh, you know, schools become. Uh, um, uh, uh, sprout up, uh, and uh, there's economic prosperity because people locate around the wells. And uh, uh, what, uh, what, uh, how they do it is that uh, Gain actually meets with local government people uh, right. in these countries, and uh, they're they're uh, they tend to be focused uh, into um, several countries in Africa, being okay. Togo, Tanzania, Ethiopia. And uh, um, and Benin, and so these are not these countries are the, you hear a great deal about. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and so they've they've got a relationship with these governments, and they find areas where there's a desperate need for water, and uh, villagers uh, apply for a water well, and then drill teams go out to these uh, places and uh, provide a, a functioning deep cap water well to these people in need. And the villagers uh, pay a small fee uh, for each bucket, and uh, the water, um, the, the uh, proceeds from the um, uh, each bucket goes into uh, village projects such as vegetable gardens or right. building schools, right. and right. and also well repair to sustain. So so the, uh, so very interconnected, almost like a small business-like edge uh, or entrepreneurial edge added to this water component. This isn't just about, you know, helicoptering into a community, drilling a well, and then getting the heck out. There's, a, there's, there's more of a commitment here. Well, yeah, and I mean, uh, what, uh, what, what uh, tends to happen is that the, the villagers uh, instantly see hygiene and they see mm-hmm. sanitation, and uh, they're given training. And uh, occasionally, the villagers are seeing uh, are, are given equality training as well uh, and gender training. So um, but, you know, I you know the, the communities that build that that will build and can and do build around a well. I mean, talk about a beautiful metaphor for pretty much everything else in life, right? It, Water it, gives it, life. It's is you know it's it's just so basic and fundamental and. Yeah, it's uh, it's pretty remarkable, I think. And I think, you know, I, I remember hearing a story years ago about women who were spending three hours a day, and this is pretty common in many, many cultures, collecting water, mostly women, not always, but mostly women. What are they not doing because they're collecting water three hours a day? And Or is that now going to extend their work day by three hours? So now they're working 14-hour days instead of 11-hour days. And, I mean, I just what astounds me about all of this stuff, Steve, is how deeply interconnected it all is. Well, David, let me give you an example. Um, in, in May of uh, 2008, um, Gain drilled their first well in a small village called uh, Malungo in, in uh, Tanzania. And uh, after drilling the well, they went back four years later. And uh, hmm. what That's they good. found uh, was really remarkable, and, and one of the things that really uh, moved me. Um, you know, previously these people had been um, drinking green swamp water, hmm. filthy, stagnant water. Um, as I mentioned earlier, they had been subjected to diseases like uh, diarrhea and typhoid and cholera, and people were dying. Four years later, after the uh, well had been visited. The village chairman um, had reported that they were actually now supplying water to three villages, and they were pumping out 8,000 liters a day. Wow. And the transformation in the village was remarkable. Yeah, they I had uh, new brick houses. They had, uh, and you know, of course, they were using the water from the wells to help uh, build, the, create the mortar for the, for the bricks. They had new businesses. They were charging a small fee for, for usage, 
and uh, they had actually started to build a little uh, um, economy in this uh, village called Molongo. Um, but they had built a school, they had built a fish farming business, and uh, they were in the build uh, in the process when uh, when Gain went back to visit this village of of um, building a medical dispensing facility. Uh, which provided a whole bunch of med- which was was to provide a whole bunch of medical supplies. So, you know what they had done, David, is uh, has brought economic prosperity uh, along with better health, and this provided the villagers with the ability to, you know, have energy to get out and and get up and uh, and be doing uh, uh, activities. There was less sickness. Um, and the villagers were earning wages. Uh, this has got to, and this has to appeal. I mean, you know, this has to, and I think this is where development's moving. You know, if you were uh, to go back and read, uh, there's a book called Partners in Development that Lester Pearson was involved in back in the late 50s. That was a commission, believe it or not, that was um, um, initiated by Robert McNamara and um, about eight experts came together and they said, we got to look at what's going on in the world. And it's called Partners in Development. It was published in 68. Talks about all the same issues we're talking about right now. And I've just, I use it with my students. I try to, I try to quote from it as often as I can when I speak and so on. But what I find fascinating is that, that he or they were talking about these sustainable principles then of exactly what you're unpacking today. It's got to appeal to you on some level that you're not just going and providing clean water, but you're actually providing. Uh, uh, hmm. You know, we could we could have some fun with all the all the metaphors, but you know, you're digging deeper. You're you know you're you're uh, you're providing a foundation for a community to 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 go further. Well, I I, I think it it really is a, an example to uh, to to all institutions um, where uh, you know uh, people in need are are, are being provided uh, with. Uh, you know, with tools, and uh, and really, I think uh, the the tools have to be really well thought out. And in this particular case, uh, this is a classic example of where people can become self-sustaining with the tools that are provided, rather than just uh, dumping some money uh, into their laps. Uh, so, this so it's a at, really well thought out strategy. At the next via board rail meeting, uh, a via rail meeting where you're chairing, what's the, the the tension for you? Do you want to really? Would you rather talk about water for life? <laughs> or, or, or do you still do that when you guys are having coffee afterwards? Well, you know, I'm very passionate about the subject, yeah. uh, David, uh, and of course there's a time and a place for everything, but uh, I, I, I truly do believe that uh, business people need to um, uh, leverage their um, gifts, and uh, I've been fortunate to be uh, able to uh, participate in business and enjoy it, and and to know a lot of people, and so to the extent that I've been able to rally uh, other people along in this project, it's uh, it's just such a great uh, a great pleasure. But um, I, I want to uh, I, I wanted to um, uh, just give you some statistics yeah, to please. highlight the success of of what uh, the Gain organization has actually done. And these are statistics uh, since they started. Um, and I mentioned that one well feeds a thousand people right. uh, water. Well, this organization has actually now drilled one thousand and sixty-seven deep, deep capped water wells. Okay, so can I just interrupt for a second? So, yep. d- tell me about the deep cap side, because I don't think my listeners will. So, so you drilled a well, and it's got yep. a pump handle, and it's people are coming and they're putting buckets below. What's the deep cap uh, all about? Well, I mean, the wa- You know what? What's uh, remarkable um, is that uh, most people who are starving, and I better be careful here because I don't want to put myself out as an expert, but uh, my understanding is that many people who are starving for water uh, actually are walking on it. Right. And, uh, nice. you know, 80 meters below their feet in many cases is uh, abundant supplies of water. So the deep capped concept is to drill down into aquifers and find these water tables and uh and there's there's just abundant water flowing between you know be, beneath the feet of, of of many people and so that's really the concept and then to um you know the water self propels upward and it's capped and then uh the uh the villagers pump the uh the water out when they uh, when they need it so it's a, so 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 it's about access. 
it it uh, it is, and it's uh, it's also about um, being smart about uh, the the economy of it, and charging a small amount per bucket. Right. And uh, that amount goes into, as I mentioned, uh, building schools, and then the kids become educated, and then they find other ways to sustain the village, and uh, and so it's a it's a cycle of prosperity so and can, health. So tell me tell me a little bit about about the band. So so this was the, an opportunity for you to say, here's something I can do. We can we can get this group of people together, uh, about a, a cause related uh, initiative. Yep. We can sell this CD. Uh, going to be some fun in it, you know, some hanging yep. out, et cetera. Um, but it uh, seems to me it's, it's got to be about a little bit more than that. But, but tell me how that kind of came to be, because I think that's a pretty affirming and also at the same time challenging thing for, for others. Yeah, well, uh, I guess, um, you know, again, I, I mentioned uh, that I'm a big fan of, uh, of Mahatma Gandhi and what, uh, what he did. And, uh, you know, um, thinking through, uh, through, his success. Uh, he wasn't. Uh, he wasn't just a guy that uh, that used rhetoric, but he he actually used media. Right. And uh, when you consider that this, uh, he was an Oxford educated lawyer, and uh, came back to India after uh, learning um, about uh, uh, you know uh, uh, the principles of law. Um, he took on a big fight, and that was to get the uh, the British out of India. And he realized that he wouldn't be able to do it with weaponry, and so the 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 uh, tool of his choice was the media. And uh, he um, used pictures which appeared in newspapers around the world uh, of himself in in uh, traditional Indian dress, whether you know uh, uh, loincloth and uh, and walking with a goat and a stick. And he also symbolically uh, was. Um, was uh, photographed and, and this was circulated around the world in all the, the newspapers, particularly in Britain, of um, of him uh, weaving cotton, and, right. and this was a big bone of contention because the British wanted uh, the the, the uh, all the cotton supplied from the UK, and so uh, he wanted to ensure that the um, traditional making of cotton in uh, in India was sustained by the Indians right. and that was a chief source of, of revenue and, and economy for them. So he used um, you know a primitive form of social media and uh, was able to to uh, to get uh, people astounded and shocked uh, at what their own government was doing. Right. And uh, you know Mar- Dr. Martin Luther King who was a, a student of uh, of Gandhi's um, took those same principles back to uh, to the southern states, and of course, uh, you know, uh, amidst all the brutality and all the the racism that occurred, he he was uh, very sharp to ensure that it was all captured on camera, and circulated throughout all the media, um, and of course, the civil rights movement thrived on on media. So, um, you know, in our small little way, David, to answer your question, um, you know, to uh, to get a, a message out about uh, changing the world, uh, we've chosen the media, and that happens to be music. So. So you, you, I mean, Steve, you clearly, uh, you know, you're working with and for uh, and alongside some pretty big corporations. I mean, ultimately, a corporation is a collection of hopefully some pretty committed, passionate people. Um, you believe in the power of one. Just explain that the power of you, one. You meaning. believe in the power of 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 one. Well, you believe in the power of of one person. I mean, here you are. You know, you're talking about Gandhi and and Martin Luther King, and and love to do that, and that's amazing and wonderful. And I think sometimes, and even with my students, uh, who are international development students, who have come out of you know they're postgraduates, they're doing a, uh, they're getting into international project management. Sometimes I find even their level of passion and commitment has already been tainted by this. I don't know, this cynical edge that says, oh, wow, this is just too big for me. I, I can't do that. I mean, I'm no Martin Luther King. I'm no Gandhi, right? Uh, how the heck do I help? How can I actually get involved? And, and, and sometimes I think it's just an excuse for not getting involved. But when, I've, when I see my students who are, who are apparently passionate about changing the world, even them stumbling on it, I, I, I sometimes wonder if maybe... One of our rules, people like you and I, is to say to others, hey, hang on a minute, you can do it. You know, we put this CD together, we're collectively coming together to do this thing, and all we want to do is drill three wells. And who knows where it's going to go and look at the lives we're going to impact. 
Mm, yeah, I think. I, I think. I mean, I think, Steve. There, I think. I guess what I'm getting at, and there's a couple of questions in there, but I think, <clears throat> you know, you you talked about business people need to leverage their gifts, and and to me, that's about mobilization. And but I think on some level, you know, we got to convince others they can change the world. Mm-hmm. Well, just like I mentioned, uh, you know, one of my mentors uh, was very inspiring right. to me. Right. Uh, I think this isn't only about uh, providing. Um, you know, benefits, uh, health and economic benefits to people uh, on the other side of the globe. But it's also um, an example of volunteerism to our kids. And I have a, I have three kids. And, uh, you know, I, I know that this will be, because they've been part of this project, uh, I know that uh, they will be um, inspired at some point in their lives to take on uh, another uh, form of volunteerism to help other people. And, I think you, you know you need to make a a, a bit of a, a show of of your volunteerism, not in a self, um, you know, uh, elevating kind of way, but mm-hmm. uh, but it, but in order to elevate the benefits of volunteerism, so that other people participate. You know, and I come I come back to that whole um, you know you talked about about going back into that village in in Tanzania after Gain had drilled you know where they drilled their first village uh, their first well. And to see the 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 um, hmm, just the community capital C, it's it's, it's got to be it's got to be pretty affirming, pretty encouraging, and I think a, a great indicator once again of the of the infrastructural angle. I think to all of this, the interconnectedness of it all, that splash and ripple effect. Well, you talk about the power of one, David, and uh, you know not only that example, but um, through one person's vision and uh, and obviously this gain initiative started with one person's vision or several people's vision and uh you know the rest of us have jumped on board but through that single person's vision mm-hmm. gain now estimates that there have been 1 million and 67,000 villagers who now have clean water wow through through that vision of that uh, that person who originally uh, thought of that so you know um there there is a spark that uh, comes from a great idea, and uh, I would just suggest that anybody with a great idea needs to start with it and expect to fail, uh, you know, uh, right. repeatedly. But right. uh, if yep. you're dogmatic about it, you'll you'll continue and you'll uh, you'll succeed in what you'd like to do. Is but, this um, Steve? Is this a one-off for you? I mean, are you gonna you gonna sell the you know the band gonna do one big concert at Nathan Phillips Square, sell sell a bunch of <laughs> albums, and, <laughs> and then and then you're gonna move on, or do you think this is in your blood now? Well, uh, I, you know, I, I, I think that, uh, that one step at a time, we've got a goal <laughs> yeah. to, uh, to, to, uh, to get three wells going here. And, uh, my hope is that it gets, uh, you know, we, we do more than that. And so if we, uh, if we're, if we're successful in getting three wells going, who knows, uh, whether we'll, uh, we'll do it again or, or, uh, or what we'll do. Yeah. So, so in like five, six years, I'm going to be talking, you, you guys are going to be on tour. I say, hey, I interviewed that guy six years ago when he was the director, uh, board of directors of VRL. He left that six years ago <laughs> to yeah, pursue. I, <laughs> I, uh, I think I will have my day job for uh, yes, for a long time. I bet. <laughs> I bet. I bet. What's uh, where? Where? Where's the? Uh, uh, where are you guys located? What? Where are your wells going to be? Or, or do you know yet? We don't know yet. Oh, I see. That's, okay, uh, that's up to uh, to gain uh, okay. to uh, to fit us into the queue and. Uh, in fact, there are many organizations that have jumped on board and are, um, are, you know, queuing up to uh, to uh, contribute money to uh, to help this great cause. Yeah, and uh, clearly will be based will be based on need of of of, of various kinds. I would think. Mm-hmm. Tell me, so so in the circles you travel in, business world, um, personal, uh, you know, soccer coaching, whatever it is you do on on the, do people believe we can change the world and do you think i hate to say, i don't want to make this sound conditional i don't i don't like the idea of imposing guilt on others to say you're not doing enough but at the same time uh, i am sometimes discouraged by what appears to be a lack of interest do you think that's true and if so how the heck do you get steve mallory people excited about what you're doing well um, I'm not sure I can answer the bigger question. Yeah, it's I, a I said I said that I um, 
you know, believe that volunteerism is very powerful. But I, I do think that in this particular example, if we can use this example of, of, of perhaps the way other initiatives um, catch on, you know, this, uh, this started with uh, several of us uh, uh, sitting around uh, chatting about it, and, uh, and it has snowballed into um, an initiative where there's been well over 20 people that have contributed to this project. Awesome. And I'm talking about so cool. people that have... Uh, um, you know, contributed their time to designing the album cover. Uh, a guy named Klaus Ulig, who runs a, a design firm, Ulig.ca, um, probably spent 10 to 20 hours uh, coming up with 10 different uh, um, you know, graphic interpretations of Gandhi and uh, and him from behind and then on the side, and finally um, came up with this particular. Uh, concept, which I think is stunning, uh, just the, the visuals. And he's just one example. Uh, there's another uh, firm called uh, C7 uh, Web uh, Graphics, and they built a website mm-hmm. uh, that um, houses all our traffic. And then there was a publicist who uh, gets corporations into the Globe and Mail and uh, and was fortunate, uh, we were fortunate that he was able to get uh, um, Paul Waldy, who's the uh, editor of the report on business to be sympathetic toward our story, nice. and he published an article last uh, Saturday in the Globe and Mail, and that was due to the uh, efforts of a guy named James Tocicelli, who's a, a publicist and a PR guy, and um, and on and on. So we've had, you know, we've had uh, we have uh, a lady named L- Lindsay uh, Bodrig, and uh, we have uh, um, another uh, lady by the name of. Uh, um, uh, Taylor Whalen uh, Oak, who is um, uh, a student at um, Western, who is uh, the, these two are our social media people, and uh, well, I, I know think, I'm going to miss some people here. I could go on and on. Oh, I bet, other... I bet you could. What What I love is you say it starts with a conversation, and then and then clearly somebody, and it sounds like it was you, but somebody has a little bit of an extra commitment or passion to say, you know what? Okay, we we really do need to do this now. It's not just going to be an item on my to do list. I'm going to get this one done, and I'm going to move, and then and then a series of phone calls and emails starts. I mean, Steve, the way you and I met, I well, we haven't met really. We've digitally met, and I I read your article in the Globe last Saturday, and I sent an email six hours later. I found some. I don't even. Oh, I think I went to your your company's website. I mean, isn't that what it's about? I think, it is. You know, yep. and I think for me, I, a you responded quickly, and and then bam, here we are six days later doing an interview that's going to go live in a couple of days. And I I don't know. I I, I kind of I just got a little bit of a shiver. I kind of get excited about that kind of thing. Yeah, me too. I think all of us. Uh, I would like to think that all of us have a um, an, an interest in helping others, but uh, but sometimes it's not easy to. Uh, to do that, and I think because sometimes when people see an opportunity to jump on board, uh, they do. See, I look at your CV and and I go, "Holy cow, this guy's pretty busy." Plus, he's got a life, you know, with family and so on, and maybe coaches soccer or collects stamps. <laughs> how, how how did you find the time? Well, uh, you always find time to do your priorities. So <laughs> That's right. uh, th- this is a case of um, you know uh, always wanting to uh, to give back, and so it's just a case of uh, of of what uh, where where you can leverage your uh, your gifts. And uh, I've been fortunate to uh, to be uh, uh, a music lover and and also uh, a guy who's involved in business. And so to be able to to tie those two together uh, was a no brainer. Are you are you going to find yourself in country once the wells are being drilled? Do you think you're going to take the team? You're going to take some of the band to get over it. One of the things I've I've I, I reflect on, and I think a lot of fundraisers certainly do, is that to get people uh, in positions of, of of influence to come alongside projects like these. Sometimes it's hey, let me take you by the hand, let's get over and actually meet and hang out with this community where where we're. You know, we're hoping to help and we're hoping to work. And that can really make all the difference in the world as well. I'd like to. I'd, I'd very much like to. I think it would be fascinating to, uh, to, uh, to see what, uh, what this has done. And, uh, you know, I'm sure there are all sorts of other ideas that can come out of this in terms of other problems, uh, social problems in the world. Uh, and I think governments can learn a lot from this, too, because uh, sometimes... Uh, 
there's more than just throwing money at a problem. And yeah. you've, you've got to really think about it. And this is a really well thought out strategy. Yeah. So just as we wrap up here, Steve, I, what, tell me a little bit more about the album and about how people can get involved. So, so on your bio and so on on the page, we'll have links to the article in the globe. We're going to have a link to the site and so on. Um, but tell me, t- so what, what kind of music are we talking about on the, on the album? <laughs> well, it's uh, it's rock music. It's uh, so. Were you like a Led Zeppelin fan thirty five years yeah, ago? Yeah, I must admit, I uh, I was uh, and am. Um, <laughs> and so yeah. it 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 uh, it it is a, a combination. I guess there's four songs on the album that uh, would be classed as uh, easy listening, and there's uh, a couple songs on the album that are very light acoustic songs, and then there's uh, four songs on the album that uh, are probably you know harder rock songs, and uh, so it's got a little bit of uh, of everything and each of the songs uh talks uh, in 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 some way a little bit about changing the world so there's uh, mm, cool. um a bit about um, but these are all ori- these are all original pieces they are yeah oh, okay. they're all original and um two of them were uh two of the l- l- lyrics were written by uh um a gentleman who who sings on a third song and um uh and there's a theme about uh you know, changing uh, some of the ways that uh, we uh, we we uh, we see the world now, be it uh, you know whether it's a Middle East uh, conflict mm-hmm. and whether we need to see things the way other people see the world, or you know whether we uh, we need to um, change the world through volunteerism, um, whether it's just really observing the beauty of nature, or whether it's uh, you know the uh, lovely. Uh, parts of relationships uh lo- loving other people for what they are and and i think uh that, that uh, there's just a a, a really a, a spirit of um of relationships with people throughout uh throughout the album and it's uh it's all about uh, really changing the world through uh through relationships and uh empathizing and sympathizing and helping others Gandhi also said, uh, or um, said many things, but one of the ones that pops to mind is the best way to quote the best way to find yourself is to lose yourself in the service of others. And and what I love about your project, I mean, there's just so many. My background academically is philosophy, and I love the interconnected nature of it all. I mean, we're talking about music, we're talking about community, we're talking about drilling deep. You know, yep. you know, it's just it's it's a little ridiculous, Steve. That the 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 stories you guys could 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 tell and will be able to tell uh you know when your project uh not uh, i i'm i'm trusting it's i'm sensing it's not going to come to an end i i have a feeling this is going to go on to do some uh some pretty cool and great things thanks so much for joining us today the 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 website is the cherry trees com. correct that's that's correct. It's the cherry trees plural band dot com. The cherry trees band dot com and and if you, I can put a plug in here, David. Can yeah, I? please. Uh, so going to that site, uh, the first thing you'll see is a video that tells you a little bit about uh, the GAIN uh, Water for Life initiative and the need for uh, you know contributions uh, of, of funds. Uh, and it also then uh, allows you to donate in three ways. One, uh, click on the Donate button, which, uh, which uh, is a big red button right beside the video. And then below that, it gives you access to our Facebook page, and uh, what we would hope is that people would go to that Facebook page and share it widely and then talk it up with their contacts. And then thirdly, uh, it uh, gives them an opportunity to buy the album by clicking on iTunes. Excellent. Well, that's great. Yeah, nothing nothing like ending a, an interview like this with an action item. I'll definitely have links there. We'll be tweeting about it. Let's get word on the street about what you guys are involved in. And um, thanks again for joining us, uh, Stephen Mallory, CEO of Directors Global Insurance Brokers. Um, stepping out on a limb and, and doing something uh, pretty cool, pretty interesting, and, and clearly going to change the world on some level. So thanks for joining us here today, Stephen. Thanks a lot, David. Thanks a lot, David.